So now that we've added some animation to the coins and we've created some programming so that they destroy themselves on contact with our agent, let's go ahead and plug those coins into a simple scoring system. So this is actually really easy to do. The very first thing we're going to do is actually create an attribute that can keep track of our score. And to do this, we're going to go back over to the game tab that we see down here under the attribute section. And we're going to click the plus icon and we're going to choose a real attribute. We're going to name that attribute score. And by default, you can put whatever score you want. So zero makes a lot of sense in this case. So that's all we need to do as far as creating an attribute. Now we need to set up a simple set of rules that gets the agent to increase this attribute when he comes in contact with the coins. And then another actor that will display whatever this attribute is set at. So first things first, let's go ahead and set up a rule that changes this attribute when our agent comes in contact with the coin. So I'm going to select the agent. I'm going to open up the backstage. Let's go ahead and close down this group. And let's first click the plus rule. And we're going to type in the word collision. So when the agent comes in contact with the coin, then what do we want to happen? Well, we want to change an attribute, the attribute that we just created called score. So I'll just type in the word change and then find change attribute. We'll click on the down arrow and navigate to that game based attribute called score. So I'll just double click on that. So I clicked on game and then score. And we want to change the attribute score to we're going to navigate to the same location. So attributes, game, double click score. And then we just want to add in plus and the number you want this score to increase by. So in this case, I want the score to increase by 100 points every time we hit a coin. So each coin is worth plus 100. And then we'll click check mark. And now every single time our agent comes in contact with a coin, the score attribute, which is here, actually changes to plus 100. So if we were to preview that right now, we're not actually going to see anything because we haven't set up a way to display that attribute. Now we are actually increasing that attribute plus 100 every time we hit a coin, but now we need to find a way to display that. So the first thing that I'm going to do is back up and create a new actor. And then we'll rename this actor display score. And with that actor selected, we're going to go backstage and put in a very simple rule. In this first box, or not even in a rule, I should say, just a behavior. So in this first box, we want to type in the word display and find display text. We'll double click on that. And if we were to just test this out right now by dragging this display score into our scene and play this, we should see the number zero in there or I'm sorry, we should see hello world, which is the default value for the display text behavior. So we see hello world, but it's in white. So we want to fix that. So we'll go back into that actor's head by clicking on the actor and then opening up backstage. And then what we want to do is we want to switch this from white to another color. So I'll just go with a very, very dark, or actually somewhere around there, kind of a purple. And we'll preview that. And you can see that's how we can change the color of that text. But instead of displaying hello world, what we want is to get this display text to pay attention to that attribute that we created. And all we need to do is find it just like we did before. So we'll click this down arrow. And we're going to click on attributes, game, and then double click on score. And we want to make sure that we remove the hello world just in case you didn't remove that. So game and score is what's going to be displayed. So now if we preview this, we should see the number zero there. So we do. And if I actually collect one of these coins, you can see that it adds plus 100 to that score. Now I don't want to see this big white box, so let's go ahead and change that. We just need to click on the display score actor that we created, which I'll do here. And then we're going to click on the actor tab right here. And we want to scroll down to color 
and open up that tab and you can see that we have this value here under the color tab so let me scroll to color and you can see alpha is set to 1. All we need to do is set alpha to 0 and then preview this and you can see now we don't have that white box anymore we just have the score sitting there. Now that's working perfectly the only problem is is that as my agent moves around the level the score is then left behind so we want to get the score to move along with the agent or not stay static in our screen and that's actually very simple to do. So I'm just going to back up and close backstage. Now remember in a very early video I said it was super important that your camera stays at the bottom left of your screen. If you've clicked on this button here and then moved the camera anywhere else go ahead and click on that button again so that you get this yellow area and you're going to move your camera back to its default position which is all the way at the bottom and then the left side of the screen. So that's exactly where it should be while we do this. Now I'm going to try and find that display score actor and what I want to do is I just want to place it in this area right there just in the corner. The top right corner of my camera and you can see the camera area is this white box that we see right here. So now all I'm going to do is go into my layers tab which is right here and we're going to create a brand new layer because if I scroll up here you can see that we're set to a master background layer but what we want to do is we want to create a brand new layer so I'll click the plus icon and we'll just call this layer HUD. Now HUD in GameSpeak stands, up for, stands for Heads Up Display and that's anything that's kind of going to follow our agent around the screen is going to be inside our Heads Up Display. So we're just going to open up the background and what we want to do is we want to drag and drop this display score all the way down into that HUD layer that we just created. So if you have a lot of images and a lot of actors, it might take a bit. But eventually you'll get it into that HUD area, which is exactly what we want. We'll close down background. And you notice that there's this checkbox here that says scrollable. Well, what I want to do is I want to move HUD above everything for right now. I'm going to turn off scrollable. And let's go ahead and preview this and see what happens now that that actor is sitting in that non-scrollable layer. So as I move around, you can see that that score follows us exactly where we need it to. So that's all there is to setting up a score. Now there is one important thing that I do want to point out at this point, and that is now that we have this HUD layer, selected. When I create new actors, so I'm just going to create a blank new actor by let's just say jumping into our media tab and just for the sake of it I'm going to grab let's say we'll just grab this key actor which we're going to use later. So I'm just going to drop that and we create this new actor and now we have this key actor right here inside our actor tab. The only problem is, is if we go back to our layers and I open up the HUD layer you can see that we have the display score but sometimes depending on which one of these folders you have selected you might actually drop that actor into the wrong area and you're going to see that it becomes difficult to get it to show up because it's been dropped in the wrong layer. So if for some reason you start dropping actors into your scene now that we've set up the score and this HUD layer and you can't find those actors anymore please remember what I'm saying here that you need to open up this folder and make sure that nothing but the display score is sitting in this folder from here on out. But in this case it actually added it to the background layer. So again if you lose your objects just make sure you double check your layers and make sure nothing is in the HUD layer.